Okay, so very quickly, uh, I just wanted to mention a few different types of noise that are uh, common in RF systems. So all of these different types of noise are due to the uh, kind of the random motion of, of charge carriers. Uh, so that could be electrons, it could be holes, depending on the doping of the semiconductor, like I mentioned. Uh, we're not going to get uh, too much into that, and we're not going to get into too much of any of this, but I just wanted to uh, throw it out there and mention it to you, because it's it's very important uh, when it comes to uh, amplifier design, especially low-noise amplifier design. It's very important for RF systems and communication systems uh, in general. Um, so the, f the first two uh, types of noises that I'm uh, mentioning here are shot noise and flicker noise. So again, the definitions of shot noise and flicker noise here are a bit technical, and I'm not going to get into any details. So shot noise is due to charge carriers crossing potential uh, barriers, such as those at uh, PN junctions. So again, we're not going to get into this uh, too much, but let's just say that we had a PN junction uh, that looks something like this. So the dopants in the n-type side of the semiconductor would be... Um, charge donors, and the dopants in the p-type side of the p-n junction here would be charge acceptors. Now, assuming that this p-n junction is at uh, a temperature greater than zero degree Kelvin, you would have random thermal motion of the uh, charge donors and the charge acceptors here. And due to the random thermal motion of the charge carriers, uh, some of the electrons in the n-type uh, side of the semiconductor here would end up filling the holes in, in the p-type side which would which would result in uh, kind of a net positive charge along this interface here uh, the same thing would happen with some of the uh, the holes in the p-type side there uh, they would kind of uh, randomly move across the p-n junction resulting in a, a net negative charge on this side of the p-n junction here so what en what ends up happening here is there's effectively um, an electric field that's generated across the p-n junction here and in order for this PN junction to conduct electrons, you need to apply a voltage that uh, exceeds the voltage that is generated across the PN junction here. And you can think of this as being uh, the potential barrier. So again, there's a lot more to it than just this. Um, you can get into uh, energy band diagrams and stuff like that, but um, that's beyond the scope of this course, and uh, we're not going to talk about that at all. Like I said, I just wanted to, to mention this and bring it to your attention. Uh, flicker noise is due to the recombination of charge carriers in the doped semiconductors. So um, again, let's say that you have a semiconductor and it's doped with, with p-type dopants. So let's say that your semiconductor is silicon, which is a group 4 element. And let's say that the p-type uh, dopant is something like gallium, which is from group 3. Okay, so it has uh, one, elect one less electron in, the, in its uh, valence shell. So depending on the concentration of the p-type uh, dopant, you end up with a bunch of uh, holes in your semiconductor material. So if an electron comes in uh, to the vicinity of one of these holes, so when the electron fills the hole, this is referred to as recombination, and uh, flicker noise is associated with this uh, phenomenon. Uh, flicker noise is also referred to as 1, one over f noise. It essentially means that it's more prominent in the uh, low frequency side of the spectrum. Uh, so you can see this plot over here on the right-hand side. Uh, the line down here represents the combination of thermal and shot noise. And this, uh, this line coming down on an angle here represents flicker noise. You can see that it's more prominent in the uh, low-frequency uh, bands. So in RF systems where we're dealing with high-frequency signals, flicker noise is uh, less of a concern. And it's thermal and shot noise that are more prominent in, in the higher frequencies. So again, thermal noise is due to the motion of charge carriers. And in this case, it's the motion of charge carriers due to the uh, inherent uh, thermal energy. Thermal noise is often referred to as white or Johnson noise, and the power spectral density of thermal noise is shown here. So in this case, we're referring to the thermal noise of a resistor. So this R value here refers to uh, the value of that resistance. T is temperature in Kelvin and K is uh, what's known as the Boltzmann constant. So the noise due to a resistor is often represented like this, where the noise part of the resistor is kind of uh, broken out and put into series with an ideal resistor. So if you take that noise source and you match it with a uh, perfectly matched uh, resistor of the same value here, and the voltage that appears across this resistor is going to end up being uh, Vn over 2, just uh, due to the uh, 
voltage, voltage divider effect here. So in that case, the noise power in the resistor is going to be uh, the voltage across the resistor, which is Vn over 2 squared divided by the value of the resistor. You end up with Vn squared over R. And then using the power spectral density uh, formula that we saw uh, up here, then in a bandwidth of delta F, this is equal to the Boltzmann constant times temperature in Kelvin uh, times the bandwidth. Okay, so we're not going to use any of this for this course, but I just wanted to kind of uh, introduce it to you, like I said. So the last thing that I want to say about uh, noise, at least in, in the context of thermal shot or flicker noise, is the fact that um, if you have two noise sources that are in series, so let's say that you have two noisy resistors in series like this, then if you were to break them up into their noise model, then the ideal resistance values would sum. You would have the noise due to uh, the first resistor, and then you'd have the noise due to the second resistor. So you might be tempted to sum these two voltages uh, together, but this would actually be incorrect. Okay, so when we're talking about noise sources like this, the voltages, first of all, are in terms of uh, RMS values. And secondly, the thing that we're most concerned about is the uh, summation of the noise power themselves. Okay, so if the noise sources are uncorrelated, then the noise voltages are summed like this. Okay, so whenever I see a voltage squared, it usually makes me think of power. So again, I think of this like uh, the total power is the sum of the uh, power due to the individual noise source. This is kind of how I think about it. Okay, so we're not going to look at this uh, in any more detail, but I thought it was at least worth uh, mentioning. So this isn't really discussed in uh, Chapter 9. Uh, you can read about it in Appendix H, and there's other good uh, texts out there that are available uh, on the Internet that you can find, and you can read more about this.